Hey, this is Lecrae. You are watching the Prison Fellowship YouTube channel. I always say, you got to pass the test to have a testimony. There's a test for every last one of us here. Not just you being incarcerated, but those that are out there incarcerated too. There's a test that every last one of us has to pass. We must pass the test to be able to have a testimony. Like they said, how good God is, God is good. You know, we all have a story, we all come from somewhere. I'm no different. I come from a broken, dysfunctional home with a raging alcoholic father who beat the living crap out of me and told me I would never amount to anything. Came home for the last time when I was 14 years old, pulled out a shotgun, and said he was going to kill the whole family. So had it not been for me and my brothers went into action, had it not been for my mother, we would have killed him that night. Pulls out a shotgun, says he's going to kill the whole family. My brother grabs a butcher knife, I grab a frying pan, and it almost ended there. Had it not been for my mother pointing to us and looking at us and telling us to get out of the house, it would have ended there. So there could have been a tragedy in my life before I ever put a uniform on. I was broken before I ever put a uniform on. My pain led me to my greatness. But my greatness would eventually lead me to my destructive behavior. Because you know brokenness is real. Lawlessness brings about brokenness and just continue to bring a broken generation of people that just continue to come here and they continue to just fall into the cracks of life and doing the same thing. Looking for a different result, looking how to get better, but I don't know how to get better because I'm broken. And guess what? Nobody signed up for it. Playing Major League Baseball didn't make me well. It just made me a baseball player. Putting on a uniform just covered up the wounds and the scars of who I was. Yes, of course, I achieved a lot of great things playing baseball. It was fun playing baseball because I grew up as a kid playing baseball and I wanted to play baseball. But that didn't make me a man. That just made me a baseball player. See, I didn't become a man until I met Jesus. See. I think a lot of times in a society that we live in, they make it believe that you're well because you accumulate wealth and you accumulate fame. I lived behind community gates and had millions of dollars and had a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, I was never well. Who am I? Who are you? What is this life all about? And a lot of times, that's what a lot of us end up in. Who am I? What, what is this life all about? Because we look at celebrities and we see them and, and we think because they have everything, they should have it all together. Well, the devil is a liar. They don't have it all together. They just have a bunch of stuff. And TV makes everybody believe that they have it all together. Well, I'm here to tell you guys today that's not the case. For the grace of God, they go I. For the grace of God, they go them. Had they not had enough money to be able to do what they need to do to get a lawyer and people to fight for them, they would be in the same place that some of us end up in. They just have a little bit more ability to help them get away for that short period of time. But that does not save them, that does not spare them. That's why you see so many of them end up ODing and dying because nobody ever tells people that they have a problem. Why? Because everybody believes that they're important because of the status of who they are. Well, I just came to tell you today that the devil has been deceiving people for a very long time. And he's been making people believe that they're well when they're not well. Because you can't get well on your own. I couldn't get well on my own, you know, because of my own personal addiction and ended up in a Florida State prison with a T17169 because of addiction, having cancer twice and losing my left kidney in my second surgery. See, God was doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. See, some of you that are here, if you hear this today, God is doing for you what you couldn't do for yourself. Because had he given 
what you deserve, you wouldn't be here. So don't fool yourself about being incarcerated, you know. It's a, it's a stopping point of God sparing your life to give you opportunity to get it right. Because he didn't, he didn't have to give it to you. You can look at this and say, it's the society, it's the Department of Correction. No, it's not until you actually look at yourself and say, it's me, myself, and I. The foolish stuff that I do should have cost me my life. I should be dead. I shouldn't be standing here, but God spared me. You know what God extended to me? He extended grace to me. You know what grace is? Grace is something you don't deserve, and he gives it to you anyway. It's because we don't know who we are, not what we do. Everybody look at it as what we do. Everybody look at it as what I did. I used to be a Major League Baseball player. I hit home runs. I was in all-star games. I won championships. But who am I? Who am I really? You know what it truly all boils down to, guys? See, I came here to uh, bring some hope to you today. I don't have to be here. I got a lot of places to be. I traveled 270 times preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because I've had a true transformation with Christ, just like everybody else that has come up here and shared their testimony. A testimony is a transformation with Christ. That's what we're trying to get you guys to see. You can have that same experience. Because once about a time, we were sitting, some of us were sitting in the same seat you're sitting in. But we realized that it had to be something different that I had to do to get to a better place to become a better me. I'm not just talking about jailhouse Jesus. Glory to God. I'm talking about having a true conversion with Jesus. A true transformation with Jesus. See, because if you ever get to the place of knowing who Jesus is and not just his name, like the scribes and Pharisees when he was hanging on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? But his last words on the cross were so profound, it will liberate your life forever. He said, it is finished. What is he saying? What is Jesus saying? Who is Jesus? He's a man. He's a holy man. He's a righteous man. He's a man with no sin in him. See, the problem was with me was I was a sinner and I needed a savior. See, when you understand that you're a sinner and you need a savior, you need somebody to save you that can restore you and bring you to wholeness and righteousness and then you are able to live the abundant life that he talks about. See, the Bible has been here forever. The Bible is clear about everything. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my word. Who is Jesus? We treat Jesus like he's just nothing in a society and a culture we live in. We don't even understand that he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. By his stripes, by his stripes, you get to be healed. When you enter into a relationship with him and you surrender yourself truly to him and him only, you will be empowered with such great wisdom and knowledge that does not even come from here. It comes from a different place. It comes from the kingdom of God through his word. See, I, I stopped by to tell you today that we all come in here with this ministry to tell you we love you. We want you well. But we know you're not going to get well just by yourself. You're not going to get well just by your looks. You're not going to get just well by talking. You won't get well by your actions. 
If you take actions in this lifestyle of what we're talking about, coming to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, little did I know that my mother was dying, and she died at the age of 55 from terminal breast cancer, and my mother was praying for me while I was playing Major League Baseball and living the heathen lifestyle. My mother was on her face praying to God that God would save me. How do I know that? Because my sister found the journal under her bed after she passed away. And in the journal, she's praying for all her kids. And when she gets to me, she says, God, knock him off of his throne. Glory to God. I can't wait to see her to give her the biggest hug. Because you don't understand. What I'm trying to get some of you guys in here to understand today those prayers of my mother came to pass. I'm living the legacy that she prayed for. How many of you in here has somebody been praying for you? You know what I'm talking about. Folks been praying for you, hoping you get it. Some of your dads have got kids and your kids didn't sign up for this. It's complete foolishness by the enemy. The enemy deceives all of us. Every man that will come here, the enemy will deceive you and make you believe you all that and all this is important out here. This is not important. This is, I'm here to tell you, my name is Daryl Strawberry. I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm here to tell you, this is not my home. This is just a pastor. A pastor, a pa make, you gotta pass the test to get the testimony, to get where God's trying to get you. If you don't, the enemy wants company. And he's no joke. That's why you end up, and that's why I ended up in a place like this. I ended up in a place like this because I'm a sinner and I needed a savior. And it wasn't until I clinged on to the savior that I will be restored, and I will be restored to wholeness and righteousness. Because, see, what God created from the beginning in the book of Genesis, Genesis 3, he created good when he created Adam. Then Eve came along and he told them, do not eat from the midst of the tree. So they, the woman eats from the midst of the tree and she gives it to him. And guess what? One man brings sin in. And God brings his son, Jesus, through the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now God brings his son in. Now his son, Jesus, comes for all that we will all be extended the grace that we need. The only difference in my life today is, is I've been rescued, redeemed, and restored. The life that God is trying to give every last one of you. Because you're no different than I was. You're no different than the rest of the group here. Well, he was. We were all the same. We were all sinners. And we made foolish mistakes until we had the personal encounter with Christ. Now we no longer have to make foolish mistakes anymore. People always say, you know, when they go to church and they say, well, Mr. Darrell, aren't you still a sinner? Yeah, I just don't practice anymore. As a lifestyle of practicing, living and doing whatever you want to do. Listen, guys, I'm trying to tell you, you need to hear this. You can pick your sins, but you cannot pick your consequences. You can pick them all day long, but consequences are coming. It's been here from the beginning. See, I didn't, I didn't get this education from man. I got this education from the Holy Spirit. See, when God called me to preach, I thought for sure you got the wrong guy when he called me to preach the gospel. I said, you, you got the wrong guy. I said, don't you know what I have done? He says, yeah, you're the perfect candidate. Somebody that don't think of himself being perfect and become holy and get a transformation. Now I can pour my spirit into you. Now I can use you to go do great work for me. Because when you go through the book of this Bible, everybody in this Bible that God called and used, they all had issues. Issues. 
struggles. Moses had a speech impediment, he couldn't even speak. God used him mightily to lead the Israelites out of bondage. He couldn't even speak. He killed the Egyptian. He murdered a man. And God still uses him. David, who was a womanizer, put his best man on the front line to be killed. Uriah, so he can have his wife Bathsheba. And God goes on to say, he's a man after my own heart. So what am I telling you? Your mistakes that you made are just mistakes. They're not a surprise to God. Nothing surprises God. He knew that I would be a person of falling short. He knew that everybody else that have a testimony would be a person of falling short. He's not looking for someone that's perfect. He's looking for people that are available. It's those that make themselves available for his work. It's those that care about others. It's those that don't walk and ride on their own ego or their own shoulder or I'm this and I'm all that. Uh, the devil has been lying. Jesus talks about it in John 10, 10. Jesus said the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. He's not talking about abundant life where you will have things. He's talking about abundant life where I'm gonna give you peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, power. See, the stuff that that's lacking inside of you guys and was lacking inside of me, I was trying to do it all on my own knowledge instead of having kingdom knowledge. Because you know what comes from kingdom knowledge? Great power. Great power in this book right here. I, see, guys, I don't know what took me so long to pick it up. I can talk from an earthly standpoint at any time, but there's no power in it. But when I talk about biblical principles and from a kingdom standpoint, there's power in it. Because you don't understand that Jesus went to the tomb. He conquered death. He went to the tomb. He got up early Sunday morning. And when he got up from the tomb, he got up with all power in his hand. So when you, when you decide to make a decision here and die of your flesh, your flesh that talks to you, you need to learn how to tell your flesh, shut up, you're stupid. Because your flesh man is stupid and he talks to you and all he do is keep you going about worldly things and things to hear. Yes, we live here, but I'm not from here. See, I live according to what the Word of God says. And you, when you understand that Jesus went down into that tomb, and you understand that Jesus got up early Sunday morning, and he got up with all power in his hand. See, Galatians 2.20 talks about it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. See, the devil has been lying to all of us. That's why the society is like it is today. Because the enemy has a plan. And God has a plan. See, most people don't even know who the enemy is. They don't know his name was Lucifer. He was a worship and he got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be bigger than God. But nobody can take over for who God is. God is real. Some of you may have not experienced it yet because you have not participated. You're too busy sometime. And I was in prison in Florida. And so many guys are too busy sometime thinking about how they're going to do things a different way when they get out. They're not thinking about having a transformation and changing the course of their life and becoming everything that God wants them to be. Why? Because they be inside of here and they think, well, everybody think, oh, look at them, they go on to church. Well, either you're going to be on that yard lifting weights, trying to build muscles, or you're going to be in church in chapel trying to grow spiritually. That's a man decision. Either you're going to be Someone that's not a follower and learn how to be a leader for yourself. 
not for someone else to tell me what to do. Yeah, when you're under the Department of Correction, they have every right to tell you what to do. And you want to get mad at them. Well, you put yourself there. That's the way I had to look at it for myself. Did nobody else put me there? I put myself there. It's not until a man examines himself and then he will know himself. You will never know the identity of who you are if you never examine yourself. If you continue to say, well, it's the system, it's the system. No, it's not the system. There's something wrong with me. See, if a man wants to get well, he'll look at himself. I won't have to look at everything else. Because when I was behind the prison gates, I told myself, I ain't never coming back here again. I ain't never coming back here again, and I never went back. So guess what? That means I had to do something different. Because if you don't do anything different, a fool will continue to be a fool, and he will continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. The good thing about being here today in this camp, you guys, some of you are getting out soon. Your day is coming. Your name will be called. I was just in the penitentiary up in Pennsylvania, right by Penn State. 2,000 inmates, maximum security. 300 of them got life. And a lot of other ones got long term there. But we worship and we I preach and their worship team was on fire. And I understand it because they there, they have long term guys been there 40, 50 years. But they have found the Lord. You can tell when people have made a commitment to walk with the Lord. And it's good to see that for men that are never probably going to get out, probably going to die now. But they have found peace with God. You guys are walking out. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's the question that I ask you today about yourself after walking out here. What's next for you? Don't just be in here and have a... Well, I go to chapel, <laughs> but nothing's changing. And I'm still out on the yard. I'm cussing like a fool and talking like a fool. And talking about I want to be better. You don't get better that way. You get better when you apply these biblical principles to your life when you start making changes for yourself. See, the enemy is, the enemy purpose is to deceive you. Deceive you. Well, nobody's there for me. Well, when I was in prison, you know, I, I had achieved all these great things. Nobody was there for me either. Because why, you know why? I didn't deserve anybody to be there for me. That was the reality of it. Broken promises to my kids, my family members. But you know who was there eventually in my life when I decided to get serious? God was always there waiting. And once I finally entered in, God entered into the relationship with me. And I was able to move forward. Because the enemy purpose is to deceive you, to deceive you. Number one, he comes to steal your identity so you do not know who you are. Number two, he comes to kill your purpose so you do not know why you exist. Number three, he comes to destroy your mission so you do not know what to do. See, this is not a new thing to me. Men are lost all over the place. Not just in here, but out there. In the church house, in the family life, checked out. 
because they're consumed and being deceived by the enemy I, I, that I don't have enough. And, and you got enough when you walk with Jesus. You got more than enough when you walk with Jesus because it's not about things. It's about the peace, the joy, the wisdom, the knowledge, the power, and all the things that he's going to give you that nobody else can give you. It doesn't get, you don't have these, I don't have desires. I don't have worldly desires. Why? Because I've been born of a new spirit. Not of my flesh. Yes, I was born through my father and my mother, and that was of the flesh. I'm not no longer born of the flesh. I'm born of the Spirit of God. John 3.30 talks about it. said, He must increase, but I must decrease. See, I didn't get an education, a biblical education, by going to school. I got a biblical education by the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because I have a relationship with him. And you remember when Jesus was getting about to ascend to heaven, he said, I'm going to send you one, the comforter. He's going to teach you all things in remembrance of me. See, if you listen to what's coming out of the book, you'll learn who you are. It's there. It's always been there. And it will always be there. We're just a different generation of people from the generation back then. They all had the struggles and the issues with Moses and all them David and Jonah when God told him to go preach the gospel to a city in Nineveh and he jumps on the boat to go the other way to Tarshish and God throws him in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights just to teach him that he's God. Just like God sat Daryl Strawberry down and put him in prison just to teach him that he's God. Just like God is sitting you here to teach you that he's God. Either you got to realize that I'm God or are you going to run with the enemy? And the enemy plan is clear. Jesus said it in John 10.10. 10. His plan is clear. The enemy's plan is clear as day. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's been doing it for a very long time. He knows exactly what he's doing. But it's those that finally make a decision and says, you know what, I don't want to long, no longer want to live like this. I want to clean my life up and I want to become something different. You know, it, I thought it was baseball. I thought it was, you know, everybody talking about well, you're supposed to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't care about no Hall of Fame. I don't care about no baseball. I care about the kingdom of God. I care about souls. I care about souls. I care about souls like Billy Graham was. Billy Graham was the best evangelist, best preacher I've ever seen. All he cared about was winning souls, coming back to God, telling people to repent because God has some grace and mercy for you. And if you repent and you ask God to forgive you, and he will, and he will start you on this way, he will use you mightily. All the broken pieces of who you are, he'll pour his spirit into you and use you mightily for his kingdom. Jesus' purpose is for you to have peace. Hmm. God wants us all to have peace. Not peace from a worldly understanding. He's talking about his peace. He's talking about, I'll give you my peace that surpasses all understanding. But you have to obey my commandments which is the biblical principles. If you can't obey those, you will always struggle. You will always have a heaviness over your life if you can walk in obedience. The way we walk in obedience with God is we surrender. We commit ourselves. And we trust the process. It's not an overnight miracle. I wish I could say it. I wish I could say when I went to prison that was overnight. No, that was long in the doing. That was long in the doing in my behavior of who I was. Under the Department of the, uh, Correction, uh, DOC on probation, and, and say, well, say it's probation fault. Well, no, it's not probation fault. You know, if I if I if I if I pass the drug test, then I got a chance. If I report and do what I'm supposed to do, I got a chance. It's the same with every last one of you sitting here today. Your day's gonna come, what are you gonna do? 
What have you learned about yourself? Why you spent time here? Because I go out to some places to do ministry and they ain't coming out. But my same message to you is the same message to them, is to bring them hope in Jesus Christ. And to continue to follow Jesus Christ, continue to have a personal relationship, continue to be able to overcome life situations. Overcome the temptations, because the enemy has always got temptations there for you. See, and I think as people, and we, 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 we haven't been able to educate our people about the biblical principles. That's why we all end up broken. Because the society is not educated about the biblical principles. They don't want to hear about Jesus. Jesus is not important to them. But he will be one day in his return. Because he's coming back. We're getting close to the end of him coming back. Because you see what is happening. It's either you're going to make a decision to follow him or you're not. There's no in-between. I don't care what anybody say. Like I said, I'm not educated enough. I, I didn't go to school for this, but I know who is educated enough that taught me this Bible supernaturally, the Holy Spirit. But I had to apply myself. I had to separate myself. I remember all the players that I played baseball with when I said I was going into ministry. Ministry, guess what they said? Well, let's see how long this is going to last. Well, it's been 20 years and they're still waiting for me to come back. They're still looking. They're still looking and say, well, I'm not sure if he's really saved and preaching Jesus. I know he's doing all this work and he's going around and preaching and talking about Jesus. But I, I really think he's coming back. But see, they don't understand 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, they don't understand. When Christ gets a hold of you, you become a new creation. The old is gone. The old is dead. They're looking at the old, the, the old sinner. Darryl Strawberry was the womanizer, the alcoholic, drug addict, uh, the sinner I was. They're looking at him, but he's dead. When are you going to die? Ministry is about hope in the Lord. To show you he's the only one who can clean you up. You cannot clean yourself up. We've all tried. We've all been there. And we all have failed at it. It wasn't until we allowed the Lord to be Lord over our life. Not straddling the fence like this, saying Jesus' name, but I'm denying his power. That's what most of us do. We say his name, but we deny the finished work at the cross. The work has been finished at the cross already for you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? When, when do you get to that place like all the rest of us have and you have opportunity? Get to that place, pick up your cross and deny yourself. Pick it up. It's heavy, but it was heavy for him too. But we pick it up daily. And how do you pick it up daily? You apply yourself to your devotion, to his word, to prayer and meditation. Seek after the kingdom. Like they said, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added into you. He's talking about I'll give you more than you deserve, more than you can ever imagine or think. That's that Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. The power that works in us is Christ himself. Hey, somebody, somebody forgot to tell you guys, but I need to tell you this. Jesus is a bad dude. I need to share that with you here in this facility before you walk out of here to walk out of here with Jesus as Lord over your life. Don't walk out the same. Because if God didn't forgive sinners, 
heaven would be empty. It would be completely empty. Because there's not one person that has entered in and left here that has never fallen short. Because the Bible said we will all fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, I learned from my failures in life to become the man that God had created me to be. It wasn't a baseball player. It was God had created me to be an epistle of Christ. God has created you for that too. But you have to participate in God's plan and not your own plan. And when you do, you'll be able to fulfill the promises over your life that God had from the beginning. See, we didn't know that God had some great promises over our life from the beginning. Like they said, all the, all the things, the opportunities that come, you become that too when you walk with God and you get to be a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, we don't even understand that a lot until we enter into the relationship of understanding the Bible. And now, you, now I don't even have a job. I had a job playing Major League Baseball and I traveled for six months. I don't even have a job now and I travel 270 times preaching the gospel because guess what? I work for the Lord. That's amazing what he will do. His promises over your life is real. God won't change his promises over your life. He will fulfill his promises over your life if you repent. See, there are things that we must do to get to what we need to get to. It's not just going to come to you. You can sit here and be here all day and think, well, that's for them. You, well, you'll never experience what God has for you if you don't ask God to forgive you and turn. See, the Israelites, they could have been in the promised land in 11 days. They complain so much, God sent them in the wilderness for another 40 years. You know what I love about God? God will leave you stuck if you want to stay stuck. They could have been in the promised land. They were complaining about Moses not being a good leader. God used Moses to show them to lead them out, out of bondage. But they complained. So he sent them in the wilderness for another 40 years. It's up to you to make that decision. You today, it's up to you to make that decision. Can somebody play softly for me? Can you play something softly for me? I'm gonna close down on this here, you know, because I have seven promises of God. I like these seven promises of God because they stand for you, they stand for me, they stand for anybody. Anybody that's in here, they stand for you. God's promises are real, and they're forever and ever and ever and ever. I never knew I'd be a preacher of the gospel. I could never imagine I'd be a preacher of the gospel. I could never imagine I'd stand in four pits and be preaching to thousands of big churches and leading people to Christ. But God knew it because I finally made a decision that I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to deny myself, my flesh, my thoughts. And I'm going to follow Christ. And I'm going to let God's will come forward in my life. I had to repent and turn from those wicked ways. And I had to say, God, you know, I used to come to this cross. The cross, the symbol of the cross, is where Jesus shed in his blood. And you know what his blood, what's in Jesus' blood? Spotless. Holy, righteous, cleansing blood. The blood of Jesus delivers, sets you free, bring you to freedom and right standing with God. Seven promises of God I'm going to get to, but one word or two, God. Two words, three words. Because <laughs> I want you guys to get this. Number three, yes. You gotta say yes to Christ. Why yes? You know what that means? You enjoy salvation. You get to enjoy salvation. Number two word, ego, three-letter word, easing God out. How many times have you been easing God out? It 
driving the car right off the cliff. You don't have to drive it off anymore, brothers. You can say today, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I need you. Help me. Help you challenge yourself. Number one word, fat. Not talking about anybody in particular. I'm saying a word, fat, F-A-T. Well, you know what that means? Faithful, accountable, and teachable. Through the word of God. And it's going to bring you home. There's the seven promises of God. Number one, I will be with you. Number two, I will protect you. Number three, I will be your strength. Number four, I will answer you. Number five, I will always provide for you. Number six, I will give you peace. Number seven, this is what God says to every last one of us. Hallelujah. I will always, always, always love you. When nobody else loves you, I will always love you. Jesus is the Messiah. He loves us. He will never leave you or forsake you. Everybody else will be gone. Friends, family, because of your circumstances. But Jesus will not leave you even in the midst of your circumstances. He loves us. His grace, he extends it to you. And if that's you right now, I want you to come forward here and I want to pray for you right now. If you know you need to let go of some things, you need to try something different for yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. It's, not, it's about between you and God. There you go. A, a man, when a man responds to God, God responds to that man. A lot of times, you know, brothers, we can't believe this, but it's real. You hear me, brother? It's real. Those tears are real. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. These are real moments. I don't take none of this for granted because God sends me here to tell you that he loves you. Everybody else may reject you, but he loves you. He's crazy about you. He says, give me your heart. I don't need your head, I need your heart. That's what he needs. He needs your heart. Give God your heart, He will heal you. So many of us sit in our seats and never release ourselves, and we got such a brokenness about us in our life, and we're always worried about what everybody else is thinking. You know what? I almost missed the call of God in my life because I was worried about everybody else. Now a nation is looking at me and saying, Who is this guy? I belong to Jesus. So do you. Don't you ever forget it. Don't you forget it either. Don't you forget this moment in this day that you walked down to the cross and you said to Jesus, help me. I don't want to be this person. I want to be free from this person I have been. And that's what God is about to give to you right now, the freedom. Right here, right today. It's going to be up to you as you walk around these yards to not be consumed with foolishness. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to you to learn how to talk a different way and start acting a different way. It works. Men are struggling, can't get free. They think this is not real. They think what is out there is real. That's not out there real. You can get back out there and the devil will kill you. He will kill you. That's his job. Our job as believers is to come in here and fill you up and tell 
thinking that God loves you, to tell you, you're not a mistake, you just made a bunch of mistakes. That's all it is. We all been there. We all been there. But at the end of the day, this is it right here. Right here. At the symbol of the cross. It's that symbol with God. There's no magical wand. He's trying to throw around and show you. He said, come to me. Surrender yourself to me. Watch what I do in your life. I don't care what you've been through. Watch what I do in your life. If you walk with me, trust the process. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. He will direct it a straight way if you trust him. Gotta trust him. He's good. He's merciful. Let us pray. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, these are your sons here at the altar, at the cross. Father, we come because we have been misplaced in life with such brokenness and emptiness that has made us be the wrong person. But Father, I pray today that you have spoken to the hearts of these men and they have received your word and your message for their own personal life and their own personal walk with you. Yes, it's not gonna be easy, but we know that this day you have chosen them. And they, there may be more that decided not to come and still thinking about it. And we pray for them too, that one day that they will make that move to come to you and say, Lord, Reveal everything to me that I need to know about myself. Not my circumstances, not the trials, not the tribulations, but the personal things I need to know about myself. We all need to know the personal things about ourselves to become better at who we need to be. Because I know, Lord, you created us for good. You didn't create us for bad. We just end up making a bunch of bad decisions. And Father, we honor you and praise you today. Repeat after me, brothers. Heavenly Father, Forgive me. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Today, I enter into this new life with you. None of me, all of you. Take it all right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. I'm forever grateful. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. Glory to God. Give him a hand. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Guys, let me just say this uh, for you. That's all it is. It's, it, what we don't understand a lot of times is that simple with God. God's not a complicated person. We are. This book here has been here forever. It's a simple book for complicated people. This book will always be simple. It was very complicated when I first picked it up, but I just kept reading it. And now I understand it because it's very simple when you're not complicated anymore. Because we can screw up everything. And you don't have to, none of you. Thank you for the praise team. Give them a hand. Thank you for all the speakers and thank you for the time and thank you for the staff and warden and everyone that has allowed us to be here today and be with you guys. You know, the President Fellowship and thank you for all that they do. Give them a hand. And um, at the end of the day, this is not 
about me, it's not about them, it's about God. It's about God. It's about God, what God really want to do in your life. He wants to touch your life, for real. So when you get back out in society, you have something to walk with. Because if you're not equipped, you're going back to the same thing. I don't care who you are, you can say, I'm not, but you will go back to the same thing if you're not equipped with biblical principles. So Father, we just thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you, we thank you for this amazing day. We thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for caring about us when we could not care about ourselves. It is you. We lay ourselves down at the altar to you daily, Father, and we ask that you help us. Help us grow, help us become mature in you, and help us seek after you daily for great wisdom and knowledge so we may learn to live an abundant life as we go into our new areas of life. We thank you and we give you all the glory and we send this petition up to you. And we ask that you would seal it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. And I want to encourage you, please subscribe to Prison Fellowship's YouTube channel. You can be on the lookout for more content all year round.